Hey everyone, and happy Tuesday, and welcome back to another VR recap, going over some of the major stories over the past few days, as well as shining that light on those lesser seen. Today, we have the Facebooking of SideQuest, Apple adding more tech jargon to the VR bingo card of the day, a day late on the Oculus Quest 2 news, but multiple sources where I feel confident on pricing and exact release date, and I'm going to end on a little vlog about something that seems very missed about your possible purchase of the Oculus Quest 2. Also, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, casting your vote with the subscribe button is the best way to make sure you see more. I hope you all enjoy the video. Let's start with the fantastic news, straight up nostalgia porn for me, Doom 3 is coming to the Oculus Quest. This is being done by Simon Brown. You probably know him as Dr. Beef, who most recently brought Return to Castle Wolfenstein to the Oculus Quest as well. Now, Doom 3 originally came out way back in 2004, and to me, it's kinda still my favorite Doom game. Yes, the newest ones are complete masteries of the badass, but Doom 3 was special. It was much slower paced, you always felt in danger, and the mechanic of being forced to either use a weapon or a flashlight, but neither together, that led to a lot of tense situations. And there was a bathroom easter egg that I stumbled onto when I played that led to the girliest scream of my life. Straight from Dr. Beef, there are obviously some concessions that have to be made, but it runs surprisingly well without having to axe too much in terms of effects. I think both the dynamic shadows and lighting that were present in Doom 3 that made it so tense at times is going to be the biggest challenge for the Oculus Quest hardware to keep up, but I am pumped. It is time to rip and tear. Moving on, class is back in session. Not that class, but a discussion on the never-ending tech jargon that keeps being added to our virtual reality discussions with Apple muddying the waters even more. By the end of this lecture, let me know your thoughts on which term you prefer the most, and of course there's more than these, but we'll start with the basics. VR, it's what you think it is, virtual reality. I'm not going highbrow on these definitions, this is for the dummies version. AR, augmented reality, basically every single filter you see on Snapchat. Mixed reality, the best way to make a VR trailer. Seriously devs, implement more mixed reality please. This was brought to you by an armchair dev. I'm sorry, Blair. And XR, a term that basically encompasses everything said before and all in between. But what does Apple think of all this jargon? It thinks it's ridiculous and adds another new standard. SR, simulated reality. Apple's new reference encompassing AR, VR, and MR. If you didn't know, XR refers to extended reality, which should be ER, but that doesn't sound sexy, does it? As far as Apple goes, love them or hate them, they do have an ability to sway public opinion and normalize just about anything. Look at removing headphone jacks and Apple watches for reference, and the term simulated reality may actually catch on, I kinda dig it. I'm sure even more standards will be added because there's the catch-22 of them all, but it's at least a better debate than politics. Let me know your favorite virtual tech jargon abbreviation down in the comments. You remember that segment of positivity where I gave my reasoning why the Zuck was pro SideQuest and that SideQuest will always be a thing? Well, that video aged poorly in uh, five-ish hours or so after release. Look, I still firmly believe SideQuest isn't going anywhere for a couple reasons, but we still have to acknowledge the new Facebooking of SideQuest. Many of you use SideQuest already, and you know, to use it, that you do need to enter developer mode, which has you agreeing to the Oculus developer terms of service. Starting October 8th for new users, and until February 1st for existing users, Facebook will add a verification step that's going to require you to either add payment details or a phone number for developer access. There are already multiple steps to access SideQuest, which this aims to lighten, but the main issue many have here is the continued push for Facebook to obtain more and more personal info to access the features we love. Facebook confirmed only this in an email to upload VR. Developer verification will apply to all individual developer accounts, 
new and existing, and nothing is changing the developer mode at this time. Look, I still think SideQuest is here to stay, and I think Facebook understands the value of it. To my knowledge, from people I speak with, SideQuest and Facebook are working together to actually get the SideQuest platform directly onto the headset as an app to get rid of all that typical setup issues with SideQuest. If that's not reassuring, I don't know what is. Do you love this? Do you hate this or feel somewhere in between? I'm not particularly thrilled about giving more info out, but it's also something that I'm going to be giving out willingly. Love or hate Facebook and their choices, let's agree that hating Facebook, that's fine. Hating on users with their decisions and their product choices, that's not cool and not a good look. Money talks and with the next Oculus Quest likely being $299, most will choose them and they know this. Let me know your thoughts. Okay, let's of course get into the Oculus Quest 2, as leaks have of course been found all over the internet, which honestly was probably leaked by Facebook themselves. Please entertain just a little preachiness here. If you just bought an Oculus Quest and or are having any version of buyer's remorse, it's understandable. I completely see where you're coming from, but I don't think you should fully feel that way. Similar to a higher trim level on a vehicle, the new Oculus Quest is a large upgrade, but whether you have the original or the Oculus Quest 2, both provide one hell of a VR experience that I still choose to be in awe of every time I try a new experience. Sermon over. From this video, we know it has a new design and should be more comfortable. Although we knew this was always going to be the case, seeing this video still has me wondering. I'm assuming this Quest is just much lighter and I'm a little surprised to not see a counterweight in the back. RAM wise, we have six gigabytes here and it gives almost a 4K display. It's basically almost 2K per eye and confirmation it has about 50% more pixels than the original Oculus Quest. And of course, what made everyone jump for joy, the Snapdragon XR2 chipset, which is a large jump from the current Snapdragon 835 on the Oculus Quest. There's of course updated more ergonomic controllers and there's going to be a 64 gigabyte and 256 gigabyte version. That's what we know, but let's enter the speculation zone as I have numerous sources all saying basically the same thing and providing items to back up their claims. Nothing here is crazy new for the most part, but way more validation on them. Pricing will most likely be $299 for the 64 gigabyte version and $399 for the 256 gigabyte version. Of course, this backs up the target leaks I shared last month, and I've spoken with three different stores with the headsets now in their point of sale machines, and this is the same pricing across the board. This of course is subject to change and be wrong, I admit that, I just have enough sources to share this with some degree of confidence. Most importantly, release date leaks, I do have a few of those as well and they all are the same with release date being right around street date of October 13th. This again was present in the Walmart leaks and I do have confirmation from two independent stores that they have training and boxes in distribution warehouses with tags labeled and I quote, not to be put on sales floor before October 13th. Additionally, store visits from Facebook and Oculus reps for product training I have confirmed to start first weekend of October, which backs up these claims and dates as training is usually a week or so before a product launch. Of course, I'll give myself an out here. Again, I am confident in these sources, but information can never be 100% accurate with leaks, so we'll have to wait and see at Facebook Connect. That's where we are now, and I'll leave it at this. This very well may be a Trojan horse to some, it's also gonna be opening up endless worlds to another. Facebook is obviously doing this at a loss. I can't imagine any other way. And if that doesn't show their acceptance of VR's future, I'm not sure what does. It's gonna be real hard to compete with Facebook owning VR at this point. Let me know your thoughts. Hey guys, long time no see on camera here, but admittingly this section may not be important to many, but I think it still needs to be said with Facebook Connect being so close the day after this video's release. But critique away. If you like Facebook, if you appreciate what they've done for VR, cool. If you hate Facebook and think they're the spawn of Satan, which many do and they probably may very well be, so be it. They deserve critique. However, when we start critiquing each other based off the preferences of platform that we use, that's not a good look and that's where it starts getting a little bit ugly. And I bring this up because I've been speaking with a lot of what I call my VR friends. People I speak with a lot and even some I don't. And we've all kind of forgotten that whether you want to join the Facebook platform or not, remember, Facebook Connect is going to drive some hype and it's going to make a lot of impulse purchases happen. But remember, for all new hardware purchases, this is what a lot of people forgot, new hardware purchases, you are going to automatically be required to have a Facebook account when that headset reaches your house. So for those who thought they still had a couple years 
through the guidelines for them to have a Facebook account. If you get the Oculus Quest 2, you will immediately need a Facebook account. So keep that in mind. One way or another, Facebook has a lot to critique on, where there's, there's a lot of bad stuff they do, and this very well could be a Trojan horse to get all our personal information. I'm gonna stay out of that conversation, but I wanted to speak about this after discussing with someone that I love a lot, played on the Onward competition with him, and he is so torn on what to do with this whole Facebook and Oculus ecosystem. It's a tough subject. Be nice to your fellow VR enthusiasts, love them for their choices, and make the decision that's best for you. That's all I can say, but remember that you need a Facebook account immediately with the purchase of the Oculus Quest 2 to play and have full functionality. It's gonna be required from the start. But that's gonna be it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you never miss a video. See you next time, Space Cowboys.